How's it going everyone? A brand new state of play has officially been confirmed, but don't get too excited. It doesn't look like this is going to be a major, major event, but they have detailed some of the stuff that we can expect to see, and it does look like we're going to get a big update on a notable title that I am not completely sold on based on some recent information that came out, but we'll talk all about it. So, uh, again, this isn't a PlayStation showcase. The showcase is rumored to be coming later this year, maybe sometime around like E3 time. Um, that is probably going to be your big event where I would imagine we'll finally see Spider-Man 2 gameplay and all that good stuff. But tune in February 23rd for exciting updates from our third-party partners, including PSVR 2 reveals and an in-depth look at Suicide Squad. The official post on the PlayStation blog notes, State of Play returns with its first show of 2023. Get ready for new looks at some anticipated games from our third-party partners, as well as a first glimpse at five PlayStation VR 2 games set to arrive later this year. Then, settle in for more than 15 minutes of all-new gameplay details and updates on Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, the next game from Rocksteady Studios. It's kind of interesting that Suicide Squad is going to be presented at a State of Play event. It seems like Warner Brothers and PlayStation have a pretty good relationship together, uh, given that they did do an exclusivity deal with Hogwarts Legacy to have content in that game uh, exclusive to PlayStation. There was like a quest line that was exclusive to PlayStation, which uh, I think is absolutely whack, but uh, let's not get into that right now. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, of course, did have a little bit of skepticism, especially recently, given the fact that, you know, there was some stuff about there potentially being a battle pass and microtransaction elements, which... Um, you know, I wouldn't be too surprised if they're trying to monetize the hell out of an IP like Suicide Squad. I could understand why they are doing it from a financial sense. Like, why, you know, the powers that be that want to make the most money possible would want to extend the monetization of a game like Suicide Squad um, even further. I'm sure that's not a rock steady decision, but sometimes you have to play by the publisher's rules. Nevertheless, um, you know... It's rock steady, so I'm gonna be cautiously optimistic with it, even though I'm not crazy about Suicide Squad, but I'm not crazy about a lot of these superhero IPs. Like, I wasn't crazy about Batman either, and Batman Arkham absolutely blew me away. And again, it's rock steady. They did such a terrific job with Batman Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, and Arkham Knight that I'm inclined to believe that Suicide Squad is gonna be pretty good. Can you believe that it has been eight years, yes, eight years since Rocksteady dropped Batman Arkham Knight. They did do Batman Arkham VR in 2016, but you're talking about eight years since a major Rocksteady game has been released, and that's just wild to think about, given the fact Arkham Asylum was 2009, Arkham City was 2011, then you had a slight break until Arkham Knight, which was the first next generation at the time, PS4, Xbox One, uh, in 2015. Arkham Knight was actually scheduled to release fall of 2014, and I remember, like, it got announced with, like, a fall release window, and then it, like, immediately got delayed, and it was such a bummer, but non nonetheless, uh, they also did Urban Chaos Riot Response, but... You know, Arkham is obviously uh, the franchise they're uh, most known for. So hopefully they do a good job with Suicide Squad. Um, it would have been cool if Batman Arkham could have continued, but I couldn't understand, you know, they wanted to go into a new IP and, you know, who knows what the decision-making process of that was. Um, nonetheless, Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. And on top of that, uh, that's going to get 15 minutes of new gameplay details and updates. I imagine we're going to get a sizable amount of actual gameplay as well. Five PlayStation VR 2 titles as well that are going to be arriving later this year. Obviously, you want to, you know, generate some momentum for VR 2, especially when I heard, initially heard about there potentially being a state of play right around this time. I was like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense if they do want to promote VR 2 a little bit more. Um, you know, let's get some major titles being revealed for that. I know a lot of us have been priced out of getting VR 2 for the moment being. Um, I'm not picking it up. I've been pretty vocal about the fact there's just too many games coming out if I pick up VR 2 right now. Like, look, I'm going to mess around with it for a day or two, and then it's going to be on to playing like like Atomic Heart or Resident Evil 4 Remake when that comes out. And we all got like 8 billion games in our backlog. So do I really need to add a plethora of VR titles right now to that backlog as well? Probably not. Um, as far as third-party partners go, you know, that's anybody's guess. Final Fantasy 16 is the third-party title that, you know, I'll constantly go back to, um, you know, wanting to hear more about. But that game's going to come out in June. It's almost done at this point. So I don't really know what kind of updates they're going to be giving us about a game like that that's already uh, almost finished uh, developing. But nonetheless, State of Play, February 23rd. 
Uh, hopefully, we'll get some nice updates. It'll be happening this coming Thursday, by the way, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Pacific. So be on the lookout for that. And uh, again, temper your expectations. I remember last year when State of Play happened and they literally said it was going to focus on Japanese titles and people were expecting these crazy updates. And then the big like conclusion to that State of Play was Valkyrie Elysium and like Dio Field Chronicle. And in retrospect, look at how those two games turned out. And I liked both of those games, but you know, they were mid-level games at best. And that was like their big closing, uh, the two big closing titles for that State of Play. So sometimes, yo, just pessimism sometimes whims out it sometimes pays to be a little pessimistic when it comes to these events and uh you know then it can lead to you being pleasantly surprised as well but they're outlining what to expect suicide squad definitely going to be the major title that will be showcased there that's going to do it for me let me know your guys thoughts and expectations on the state of play event happening february 23rd sound off in the comment section down below thank you for watching and goodbye Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.